Today's racing simulators replicate real-world driving with incredible accuracy, but how do they do it? F1 drivers spend hours in simulators honing their driving and even trying out setups to use in the real F1 car, and the level of detail put into simulation is astonishing. The tracks are accurate to just a few millimetres, and every detail of the car is replicated, right down to the tiniest degree of chassis flex. But how are games able to match the feeling of a real race car so accurately? And what are some of the genius tricks they use to do it? There are a number of clever ways that creators of racing sims have made them as realistic as possible. Before we get into the cars, it's the tracks that have an essential role in making a realistic sim. The quality of the tracks in a game has a huge bearing on how the car feels, and it's about far more than just mapping out the circuit accurately to real life. Just like in the real world, the surface you're driving on makes a massive difference. So the games need to take account for this in their tracks and overall physics modeling. For example, there are many things I notice in real cars that are also present in the games. For example, at Abu Dhabi, there are loads of awkward off-camera corners that create understeer. And at turn one at Silverstone, there is a bump on the apex that can unsettle the car if you're not careful. As a result, the most realistic simulators use laser scan tracks for the most true to life car behavior. In real life, no surface is perfectly smooth, and even minute bumps and imperfections in the road can have a profound effect on the way a car responds. Undulations and bumps cause the car's weight to shift around, which unloads the tyres and requires constant adjustments from the driver to compensate. They make the car feel alive as a result, so in a simulator, accurately reproduced track surfaces add a whole other dimension to the driving experience. And with a good force feedback wheel, you can appreciate the detail of a laser scan surface even more, as the wheel reacts to the bumps in the tarmac. Many sims use laser scanning to reproduce tracks and capture this element of driving with insane precision. These laser scan tracks contain every ridge, bump and curb of the real circuit, accurate to the nearest few millimetres. This takes a matter of months to capture every detail and can be enormously costly. However, there is another way. Some racing games, like F1 2020, use other data to create their incredibly accurate track models. To create a track, Codemasters, the developers of the F1 games, use a photographer to capture the details and the circuit designers share their CAD drawings and architectural renders. These are the designs that were actually used to create the circuit. From this, Codemasters are able to accurately map out the path of the circuit, with the placement of barriers, DRS markers and curbs precisely reproduced. But the next step is equally complex, getting a virtual car to behave naturally on top of this virtual model of a circuit. This is the extremely difficult part of creating a sim, and only a handful even get close. Each simulator uses its own physics engine, which is the code that the developer has made to cover all aspects of how a car goes around a track. Things like aerodynamics, suspension, tires, and environmental conditions are all honed to replicate real life. This can be done by using telemetry, which is the hard data that reveals how a car reacts to certain driver inputs and track conditions. An experienced driver laps a track in a car kitted out with your sensors, wheel slip sensors, steering angle sensors, and more, to give a solid idea of how that particular car behaves. This can be used when the game developers define things like chassis balance, roll stiffness, and straight line performance when they reproduce a car in the sim. However, this data isn't always enough to ensure that a car responds as accurately as possible in the game, so some developers use real drivers to fill in the gaps. For example, when developing Dirt Rally 2, Codemasters enlisted Junior World Rally Championship driver John Armstrong to work on the way the car's handled in the game and to make it as realistic as possible. And for Project Cars 2, McLaren's chief test driver Chris Goodwin spent two years testing the McLarens in the game until he was happy that they handled like the real thing. And just over three years ago, I drove a Benetton Formula 1 car so Codemasters could record the audio to add to their game. They actually put the microphones in the cockpit, on the front and rear wings, as well as in the engine bay. You may be wondering what software the F1 teams use in their simulators. And for maximum accuracy, they need to run millions of additional calculations to predict how each minute change to the car will affect the car's performance. 
This is outside the remit of a game that is made to run on your game's console. So they use a modified version of R Factor Pro and the accuracy of their system is unbelievable. Over an F1 race weekend, test drivers can spend hours in the simulator back at the factory looking for ways that the drivers can go faster in real life. The simulators are so realistic that even detailed setup changes can be tested and approved by using them, which can then be applied to the real F1 car. For example, before this year's Styrian Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton spent time in the simulator experimenting with unorthodox car setups to close the gap to Red Bull, and he ended up using them during the race weekend. In F1 2021, there are a variety of realistic setup options, such as downforce levels, wheel alignment, and suspension settings. Like the real drivers, you can adjust car settings on the fly, such as engine modes and differential settings. The game also features changeable track conditions and the car setup must be optimized to suit. This works on real life principles, so in wet conditions, it's best to run more downforce and a more open differential setting for better control on the exit, just as in a real F1 car. Thanks very much to Thrustmaster for sponsoring this video. You can check out their new wheel rim, the Ferrari SF1000, in the video description. We've also teamed up to create some tutorials on the Driver61 Sim Racing channel, where I help you get faster in the sim. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.